Good morning. Good morning. I turned him on. I said, now we're going to talk about sadness. <laughs> if you haven't figured it out, we're talking about joy. And what does that look like? What does that feel like? What are the tools? Because to me, the power of prosper prosperity comes through the power of joy. And joy is a choice. Every day you wake up, you're given that choice. How am I going to embrace this day? How am I going to behave when I go out into the world? Do I wake up in the morning and I allow the world to happen to me? Remember we talked about that last week? Or do I start to set the tone of my day knowing that if I set the tone, then I get to happen to the world? And that's really different. And so last night I turned to Paul and I was like, so joy. I think I've talked about this more than once. What do I say? And then it dawned on me because I have this wonderful little book that I carry around in my purse called The Four Agreements. And if you really want to live joy in your life, then you really should embody, embrace what these agreements say. So the first agreement is be impeccable with your word. Because basically the truth is, don't, you know, be yourself. Remember? Everybody else is taken. And so when you try to um, talk or you express yourself and you are worried about what the other person is thinking, and first of all, you have no idea what they're thinking, um, then you're not being true to yourself. Now, being impeccable with your word doesn't mean you get to regurgitate your opinion all over people. I mean, you can if you want to. However, I don't think that is um, the basis of what uh, Don Miguel Ruiz was talking about when he said be impeccable with your word. What he was talking about is how many times we tell those oh so slightly little white lies because we don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. Oh, I, I can't go to the party. I'm not feeling well tonight. When the truth is, I just don't want to go to the party. And what if we were honest enough just to say, I really already have plans, for, plans tonight. Because the truth is, even if you go home and read a book, that's plans. And that's better than telling those itsy bitsy white lies. Because what happens when we tell itty bitty white lies is it becomes a habit. And then what happens? They get bigger. They become um, more part of who we are. I had a, a friend, and it took me a, a long time, in fact, we're not friends anymore. It took me a long time to realize that um, her reality was based on who she was with and what she was telling people about herself. And when it became very clear to me was right before I moved to Santa Fe. And she turned to me and she said, so, you're moving to Santa Fe. Who are you going to be? And I was like, what? <laughs> She goes, no, I'm serious. They don't know you. Nobody, you don't know anybody in Santa Fe. You could be anybody you want to. And I was like, oh, I, you know, I, I have to be myself because um, I would get lost and I would forget what I told this person or that person. And so it really is being true to yourself. And when you're true to yourself, people respect that. Are you going to hurt somebody's feelings sometime? Maybe. You know, somebody walked in here today, lovely woman, lived in El Dorado, went to a beautiful little church out in El Dorado, really loved it, realized she didn't want to drive back and forth looking for a new community. And I walked up to, into somebody uh, that had talked to her because when I was dancing up here and looking out, I thought, huh, she's not here. And I said to the person, where did that person go that you were talking to? And he said, the minute she, the music started, she knew this wasn't her community. And I said, good. <laughs> And sometimes that surprises people when I'm really clear. That's okay. We are not going to be everybody's cup of tea. And we've been good with that from day one. And for people to walk in and realize, instead of thinking we're going to change the music, to walk in and realize, okay, they're a little bit too joyful here. They're a little bit too rock and roll here. Whatever we were too much of, I was okay with that. Because we have to be who we are, and we attract people who want that same energy. You know, I have been told by people who have walked in and said, you're way too joyful. <laughs> Great, thanks. 
<laughs> I'd, like, I'd rather be way too joyful than way too serious. I really would. And so it's really owning who are you? At the depths of your soul, who are you? And how do you express that in the world? And then own that. Because here's the second, you know, Don Miguel Ruiz says, be impeccable with your word is the hardest one of the four agreements. And I was like, really? He doesn't live in my head, because mine's always been, don't take anything personal. And I have gotten so much better with that. However, there was a time in my life, trust me, I took everything personal. Because, you know, I, I guess, I, and at that time, I was trying to please everybody. So, of course, if you're trying to please everybody, you'll take everything personal. I had a dear friend recently, and um, somebody just pulled the rug right out from underneath her. And they started the conversation by saying, um, first of all, this isn't about you. And then proceeded to regurgitate their belief on top of this person. And I said, next time anybody says to you, this isn't about you, say stop. If it's not about me, I don't want to hear it. Because the truth of the matter is, if you stand and listen to anybody who says this isn't about you, trust me, it is. That's just a kind way of saying, I need to tell you something about yourself, or about you, and I kind of don't want to hurt your feelings, but maybe I do, but I'm going to try and do it with um, the socially acceptable way. So, you know, you don't have to listen to people. If somebody comes up to you and says something and it's hurtful, just say, I don't believe that about myself. Thank you for sharing. Turn around and walk away. Because, you know, what they say is anything that is said to us is a gift. Now, if I don't accept the gift, if somebody says to me, the music at your center is really... Um, way too rock and roll, way too loud, and I look at them and say, oh, well, did you know that there's another center in Santa Fe that teaches the same philosophy? It's on Marquez, I invite you to go there. Then we've exchanged gifts. If I say, oh my God, let me talk to my husband, I'll see what I can do about the music, <laughs> I've just accepted that gift. And so it's your choice. And we, in, when we're living in community, when we are doing this human experience, we're having those conversations all the time with people. And so learning how to be true to yourself and not take anything personal is really important. And for me, it's a practice. It's a practice. Sometimes I have to, and what I have said to people is if when I take something personal, what I know to be true is there's something in my subconscious mind that absolutely believes what that person just said to me. Because the truth of the matter is, if somebody says something to me and I can go, good, I'm, I'm glad that they decided not to sit through music that they weren't attracted to, then I have no attachment. And so it's how I respond. It's how I choose to respond. And so, um, and then I guess probably the, the third agreement is a little difficult too, and that's um, don't, don't make any assumptions. So what that means is you have to have those conversations with people. Have you ever had somebody say something to you and then you go home and you have the whole conversation over and over again in your head? Well, I should have said this. Well, why did that person say that about me? And all of a sudden you've got a big movie going on in your head. And the, and the problem with that movie is there's one person in that movie and they're not even in the room. Sometimes there's more than one. Normally there's at least one. So there's you, you're there definitely. And then there's the person that's walked away and doesn't even know that, you know, they, they probably walked away thinking, okay, well that was settled. You have to ask the questions. And you don't have to make somebody wrong. You could say to somebody, gee, you know, when you said this to me, this is what I heard. And so I'm wondering if, did I hear you clearly? Is that really what you meant to say? And then you get to decide if they say, yeah, that's exactly what I meant to say. Well, then where do you go from there? How do you not take it personally if it was something that was offensive? You know, the thing is, if you don't believe it, look right at them and say, I don't believe that's true about me. 
And so please don't say that anymore to me or to anybody else. Because we are the only people that control who we believe we are. Everybody else, it's just their illusion. It is just their illusion. And how you show up is how you play with somebody. You know, I have said, and I always say, I always use Maya as an example. Number one, because we're friends and I know she'll never take offense. And number two, she sits in the front row. So it's, she's kind of like in my eyesight all the time. Um, you know, I could adore Maya. I do adore Maya, actually. And there might be somebody in the world, I don't know who that would be, and there might be, who absolutely does not like her. Now, the interesting thing is, Maya's Maya. Maya hasn't treated probably me any different than this other person. I get to see Maya through my eyes and how I relate to her and what she brings to the relationship for me. The other person is seeing Maya I would bet, because Maya probably reminds her or him of somebody from their past that they didn't have a good relationship with. And we bring all that energy. And when we quit doing that is when we get to start to really have fun with each other. Now because I adore Edwin Gaines, I'm going to add agreement three and a half. <laughs> if you want a lot of joy in your life, one of the things you really have to give up is gossip. And gossip is like a poison. And gossip is when you are repeating anything, anything that you don't have a direct experience of. And when you're repeating something, even if you have a direct experience of it, and you're repeating somebody else's experience of it, that's gossip. Because the only thing you really know for sure is your experience. Gossip and negativity. I think that, um, you know, it's this joy in my heart. How many times do you let people take that joy out of your heart? Because you've watched the news, because you've heard something that's devastating, because somebody said something unkind to you. And the truth of the matter is, we live on, in the, on this planet and things are going to happen. There's six billion of us. Seven. seven billion of us? Okay, there's seven billion of us. <laughs> Things are going to happen. Maybe someday we'll all get where God informed. Maybe someday we'll treat each other with respect. Maybe someday we'll distribute uh, the food all over the world. That's not happening today in this moment. And yet we get to decide in this moment, me. So I want you to look at in this moment yourself. Are you choosing to be happy or are you choosing to be negative about something, anything? And if you're choosing to be negative about something, does it directly affect you in this moment? And if it doesn't, what would happen if you gave up that negative feeling? What if somebody said to you, you know, I had somebody walk up and she said, how are you? And I forget how I, re I responded. She said, you usually say fabulous. And I said, well, because that's what I like to feel. I like the feeling of the word fabulous. And if it's, you know, it's like, and 99% of the time, because that's what I say, that's what I am. Do I have moments of darkness? Yep, I do. However, they don't stay very long because I refuse to let them play in my mind. I do the practices. I say I'm fabulous over and over and over again because you know what happens when you tell yourself over and over again that you're something that maybe you really don't believe in this moment? I promise you, you'll start to believe it. You will start to believe it. I am fabulous. If you want to borrow that, please do. If somebody says, hey, how are you doing today? I'm fabulous. Thanks. How about you? What are you? Dandy. Yeah, whatever you choose. Go start from there. And it's not, not being impeccable with your word. It's a choice. It is a choice. And so I invite you to start looking at 
the choices you make. Because remember in this philosophy, one of the cornerstones of this philosophy is we believe we are powerful with our word. And so if you walk up to me and say, Gail, how are you? And I give you a litany of why things just aren't good, then guess what I've just created? Even if my day started that way, it's going to continue, I promise you. And so some days when I say I'm fabulous, if you see I'm fabulous, and maybe my eyes are like, mm, she's getting there. You know, because sometimes I'm a work in progress. And that's okay too. We are spiritual beings having a human experience. And I honestly believe we forget that. And we think we're human beings. And, we're and every once in a while, when we come here on Sunday, when we meditate, whatever we do, that we think, okay, now I've had my spiritual moment. Switch that. I promise you, your life will change if you switch that and start looking at yourself as I am a spiritual being. My soul is God in form as me. And play from there. Start in that moment. How would God embrace today? Fabulous! Woo! So it is. Oh, yeah.